Hey guys, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and today I'm going to be showing you my updated Hexaorb Sorceress Dex profile. So, Hexaorb actually got some really good support with these two cards that came in DBT04, and they make the deck a lot more consistent and a lot more aggressive, especially with Lalarita. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the deck profile so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So, we're going to start off with the right deck, like always. Uh, Triconnect Sorceress is my grade zero of choice. Same as all the other ones, if you win second, you draw a card when you ride. Grade one is Tier Square Sorceress. So when this is rolled upon by Pentagleam, you counterblast one and draw a card. When your drive check reveals a great, uh, sorry, when your drive check reveals a trigger unit, if it's on rear, counterblast. You choose one of your opponent's front row units, put on the bottom of your deck. So I would say if you want to run this in the main deck, kind of more as like a strict counter to Virena, sure. Uh, other than that, it's only useful for the right deck, for its right skill. Grade 2, Pentagleam Sorceress. So Pentagleam Sorceress skill is when uh, you have Hex Orb right on top of it, you look at the top three cards of your deck, and you put them back on the top of your deck in whatever order you want. And a lot of the cards in this deck actually re uh, require Pentagleam or Hex Orb as your vanguard. So you can do a lot of the skills on your grade 2 turn if you're on Pentagleam. So Obviously, we're going to do the tier square pentagleam combo. So that's kind of just going off with that. And then the second skill is when it's placed on the rear guard circle. You look at the top card of your deck and you put it on the top or bottom. If it was put on the bottom, it gets plus 2k. Uh, we do run this in the main deck as well. So I just wanted to add that so you guys already know what the skill is. And finally, for our grade three, which is hex orb sorceress, skill is whenever you reveal a trigger. During your drive check, you choose one of your other rear guards and you give it 10k. So you're essentially giving double the trigger power, but it goes to another rear guard. The act skill is if you persona road this turn, counterblast one, soul blast one, and you pick up to one front or critical trigger in your hand, put it on the top of your deck, and then your vanguard gets triple drive. So you're basically guaranteed to see a trigger when you do that, and also with the added effect that every time you drive check, you get to add another 10k to another rear guard. Plus you're getting triple drive in a format where over triggers exist. So it's a pretty decent skill. Uh, you just have to persona ride, which is the only thing you have to kind of manage. But we have, we have our ways around getting to that. So that's it for the ride deck. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with our grade threes. The only grade three I'm running in the deck is Hex Orb Sorceress. So it's just for the persona ride since you need the persona ride to activate the second skill. So I'm maxing it out by running three copies. On to our grade twos, starting with the new card. You're in full magic. Uh, what is your name? Esunono. So Esunono's skill is when this attacks, if your vanguard is Hex Orb Sorceress or Pentagleam once per turn, you discard a card from your hand, look at the top two cards of your deck, choose up to two cards from among them and you put them on the top of your deck in any order and you put the rest on the bottom of your deck and it gets 10k. So the idea with this card is even on your grade two turn, you're gonna swing before your, you do it before your vanguard attacks, discard a card, look at the top two and then you decide, huh, is there a trigger? You put trigger on top, the rest on bottom. So that way you can kind of set up for your drive checks that way. It also works with Hex Orb, so obviously you're gonna manipulate the deck that way. And I like that it's on attack so that it works. You know, if you don't know what's on the top of your deck, you can kind of set it up that way during the battle phase as well. Uh, yeah, and it's just also the fact that it gets 10K is really, really, really helpful. And that, you know, it doesn't matter if you get the effect off or not. So it's basically discard one, 10k deck manipulation. Going on to the next grade two, this was a triple R from DBT03. We're still running it, Magic of Objective Kakron. So Kakron is like a downgraded um, Olwen. So what it does is when it's placed on rear, if your Vanguard is Hex Orb or Pentagleam, Soul Blast one, look at the top two cards of your deck, and you put them back on the top of your deck in any order. So you don't get to put them on bottom, unfortunately, but it's still really decent as a setup if you want to do it during your grade two turn to see, oh, is there a trigger, you know, put it there or not. But the other really, really helpful skill is if your Vanguard is Hex Orb, Rear or Guardian Circle, this unit gets 2K power and 5K shield. So it becomes a 10K Interceptor. You can also use it from hand when you place it 
from hand to the guard circle during the guard step. So I definitely want to run four just for that reason. Want to maximize the shield value you can get. And it does help for the cost of the soul blast to like look at top two and see what's going on with the top of your deck there. Next for grade twos, this is another card from set three, but it's a rare. Magic of Appreciation, Nana Full. So Nana Full's skill is just basically to help you regulate your soul and still have soul to keep working for skills like Hex Orb, Lorita, Olwyn, Cockrone. So there's a lot of cards that soul blast, so this card helps refill that soul. Whenever you drive check a rear guard, or sorry, whenever you drive check a trigger while it's on the rear guard circle, you put a card from your hand into your soul, then draw a card. So you could also use this to kind of manipulate your deck if you know that the second card after the trigger is a non-trigger, you can set this up and use it so you can put something in the soul, draw that non-trigger, and then the next check, hopefully you see a trigger there as well. So you can do something with that as well. It's mostly just to fill your soul and to kind of like get rid of cards in your hand that you don't really want to use or can't really set up for the next turn. So it helps your hand out as well. So Nana Full is definitely a very helpful card. Next up. We're running four copies of Olwen. Olwen is from DBTO2. When it's placed on rear guard circle, if your vanguard is Hexa Orb, uh, you Soul Blast one. Look at two cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to two cards from among them, put them on the top of your deck, and you put the rest on the bottom of your deck. So put one on top, one on bottom, both on bottom, both on top, whatever order you want. The second skill is when your drive check reveals a trigger, you can kind of blast one and give this another 10K. So that second skill, is if you really want to push, you can. You can just kind of blast and just give another 10k. But the first skill is mostly just there for like you plop it down, soul blast, top two. Oh, those are not triggers. Put them on bottom. So it depends on what order you're going to do it in and how you're going to go about manipulating your deck. But other than that, Olwen is just there to be like a big beefy boy. And he looks like a gold paladin. So I like him a lot. Lastly, for our grade twos, it's. Pentagleam from the ride deck. This is the other three copies because they're maxing out at four. We're using it for the rear guard skill when it's placed on rear. Look at top two, uh, or look at top card, I'm sorry, just the top card. Put it on the top or bottom. If you put it on the bottom, it's plus two. So it's literally just a free loop. Look at top, oh, not a trigger, put it on the bottom. Or, oh, it's a trigger, keep it there. So it's still really good because it's free. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep running it. Now we're on to our grade ones. So we got a new triple R from DBT04 for Hex Orb, and it is Recurring Magic Larita, La Larita. So La Larita's skill is at the end of the battle, your drive check revealed a trigger. If your Vanguard is Hex Orb, you cannot blast one, soul blast one, choose one of the rear guards, and you stand it. Afterwards, you retire this unit. So standing units is really good because you can, that means more attacks. So if you're going to be stacking power on, let's say, an Alwyn or any of your other grade twos for that matter, swing with those first, especially if you're going to be swinging with uh, Esunono first, just so that you can kind of like swing, get that uh, check, like check top two, just to see what's going on with your drive checks. You can later restand it because it keeps that 10k power for the whole turn. So. If you stack more triggers on it, this is a 30, 40k attacker again. So these two go really well together, but just the fact that Lalarita lets you restand anything is really good. The cost is pretty steep. It is Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. So you do have to keep in mind of how you're mitigating your Counter Blast usage. But other than that, this is a great card for Hex Orb. This deck just this card just made this deck way more aggressive, especially since you know what your triggers are going to be and you're going to just stack those crits on those rear guards you're going to restand anyways. So really, really good card for Exorb. Next up for grade ones, we got our free Persona Ride card. Magic of Revelation, Tortoise, Tortress. So what Tortress does is when it's placed on rear, if your Vanguard is grade three or greater, you kind of lost one, search your deck for Hexa Orb, and you put it in your hand. It's that easy. You just plop it down, counter blast, search X orb, and then you got your persona ride for the next turn. Um, you only need two, just because you're only running three hex orb in the main deck. And with all that drive checking and checking the top card of your deck, you're bound to just see at least one of them just by either drawing or drive checking. Plus one might end up in your damage. So running three seems kind of redundant since you're not gonna get all three off. 
I feel like two is the maximum times it's going to go off during the game. Um, so the two works perfectly fine. The, um, this card honestly is also just what makes the deck function because it guarantees you Hexorb so that you can get the Persona right off. And last but not least for grade ones are Aegis Mirror Dragons. PGs. Um, it's the PG from set one. You know, the if you have two or more in hand, you have to discard when you pay the cost. If you only have one or less, you don't have to discard when you PG. So it's nice. So get your Aegis Mirrors if you're playing a Keter Sanctuary deck. Now we're on to triggers. Starting off with our over trigger, uh, our Martinoa, which is very obvious, I would say, considering the fact that giving your rear guards additional drive checks is really good for this deck because every time you get a trigger, uh, Hex Orb Sorceress effect activates. So if you activate Armartino's additional effect, which is your rear guards can perform drive checks, that means if you know what the stack is looking like for your checks, and you know this is sitting on the top of your deck as your first drive trigger check, you can go boom. Now my whole front row gets drive checks. And then when you restand a rear guard with Lalarita, that's gonna get another set of drive checks and then you're gonna be able to get more triggers. So our Martino is our go-to over trigger. Next up for triggers, we're running four copies of the new draw trigger from set four. It's the one that gets an extra 5k shield if your opponent's at grade three or greater. So we're running this just because you want to be able to see your Hexa Orb. And I know that maybe the draws seem a little eccentric just because um, you want to see the crits because uh, the critical trigger is what you want to use for Hex Orb skill to put a card back on the top of your deck. But I feel like I like the draws just because of the extra shield. I have more things in my hand to throw down to see more cards to play because we're not running um, Diaglass anymore. And Diaglass was the card that helped you fill your board. So I feel like I want to run more draws just because it'll help me see more units, fill my board, and that way I don't have to really worry about, oh no, I don't really have enough units to make a decent board. So I like the draw triggers. They're pretty good, They're pretty neat. So next up are our crits. Four copies of Blade Feather Dragon. We do use a lot of soul, like I mentioned earlier in the video. So what Blade Feather does is at the end of the battle that it boosted, you put it into your soul, choose a unit, and it gets another 2k. Um, it's a trigger with a skill, and it helps you fill your soul. So we're definitely running four of it. Also, it's a crit. So we want to run crits in the deck. Next up, I am running three vanilla crits. Uh, why am I not running fronts? It's because I believe in crits win games. And I still think that as much of a boost that Hex Warp got, I still think that the crits are gonna help you a lot because they're a lot more threatening, especially since you could restand rear guards. Putting cri critical triggers on those rear guards, if your opponent PGs your vanguard, will make those rear guards a little bit more threatening. So if like, for example, you're checking through the top few cards of your deck and you see two crits, you know you can just stack them on those two rears. That's two additional attacks that your opponent has to worry about with extra damage. So crits win games. If you want, I would say you can drop a draw, add another crit just so that you can guarantee you see that. But I feel like the seven crit works fine for the most part. And last but not least, Circling Sorceress, heal trigger. We all know what the heal triggers are for. So that's pretty much it for the main deck. I'll go ahead and I'll give like a little brief, uh, little combo video that you guys love so you can see how the deck works. All right guys, I'm gonna show you real quickly what a typical combo would be for Hex Orb Sorceress. So if you're gonna start your turn going into Hex Orb, you're just gonna go ahead and discard your card for cost, ride that Hex Orb, and then just start using Pentagleam skill. So Pentagleam, when you ride Hex Orb on top, you get to look at the top three and kind of see what you're working with. Uh, so far, look at that. We have no triggers starting with this combo. So we're just gonna go ahead, leave it whatever, it doesn't really matter because we're just gonna search our deck for a unit. We're gonna search for Hex Orb. So with the Counter Blast, we're gonna go ahead and grab out a Hex Orb Sorceress since we're on a grade three. And we're just gonna shuffle our deck because we do not want those three non-triggers sitting on our deck. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead, give a good little shuffle, add that to hand. So now we're gonna try and start re-manipulating our deck. So starting off, gonna call Pentagleam, look at top card, non-trigger, put it on bottom, free. Didn't have to do anything, we just called the unit, now we know what's up there. If you wanna be a little more aggressive, I would say you could start off with Us Esunono. If you wanna be a little more passive, you need more shield, go into Cockrone for the deck manipulation. And if you're kind of like in the middle, you could go with Owen. So I would say if like, let's let's say just starting off right off the bat, we wanna be really aggressive and just go right with Esunono. So we know when Esunono attacks, we're gonna be discarding, so we'll just leave it like that. And we'll call Lalarita for the restand. So now, we're gonna go ahead and just start our battle phase. So we're gonna go right away with Esunono because it lets you look at the top and bottom. So Esunono's skill is when it attacks, once per turn, you discard a card from your hand. You're gonna look at the top two and we see a trigger, but we don't, but I don't know, do we wanna keep the PG or do we wanna take a chance that maybe we'll see something better? But so far, since it's a draw into a PG, we'll just leave it like that. So now we know what's going on at the top of our deck. So now we're gonna go ahead and start with Lalarita boosting Hex Orb. We're gonna go ahead and start a Twin Drive. Draw trigger, we drew that PG off the draw and a heal trigger. So we got two triggers off of that. So we can split it up where we can either double up the triggers on on, on S No No. So now we have the plus 20 and we can put the other plus 20 on Hex Orb. So now we have pretty big columns, but now we can use Lalarita skill. We can counter blast, we can soul blast, and then we would stand a rear guard, and then this gets retired. So from the skills alone, Esunono got plus 30 from her own skill, plus the trigger, plus the skill Hex Orb, and Pentagleam got another plus 20. So this column is at 40, and then this column is also at 40. So just getting started, that's a pretty good first turn, I would say. And if you got crits, even better. And with that, you still have a pretty decent hand and you can kind of, you know, take some damage. You already have the Hex Orb set up for the next turn and you just kind of keep doing the same thing over and over until you finally, you know, push for game with all those crits. So that's pretty much it for what I would do to get started on your combo and maximizing the use of Esunono and Lalarita as well. All right, and that's it for the deck profile. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or recommendations, just go ahead and leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks again. Bye.